So let's uh, let's do this real quick. Nick is talking some CFL. We are now introducing a CFL segment for our Canadian peoples, as Nick played in the CFL for a decade. Um, jump right in on, on it, Nick. I don't know if you want to do a pick as well or whatever, but definitely yeah. we got to jump on the CFL. Yeah, yeah. We're going to keep it quick. We're going to keep it quick this week, man. Um, the picks this week are um, Friday. We're taking, the, we're taking the Pacers to win at home. Over the next money line, that easy. All right. Um, we're also taking the Nuggets to pull it off in Minnesota. We're taking the points for the Nuggets. They're minus. They're plus four point five. We're taking the Nuggets to win that game. Um, and then what we're doing, we're actually going to segment this into the CFL. We're going to take plus two hundred on Winnipeg Blue Bombers winning the championship later on. This is a this is a further down the line pick. So the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will be the 2024 Grey Cup champion. And this segments us into CFL, brought to you by Nick Taylor. This is the O Canada, O Canada Power Rankings. Early. It's early in the year. The season hasn't got started yet. They just started rookie camp this week. Um, they will start training camp next week. Um, and this is the early power rankings that I got for y'all. Um, should I do nine to one or should I go one to nine? How do you think, Rudy? Nine to one. Nine to one. So I changed this late. This is the Hamilton Tiger Cats will be number nine. Just because of their quarterback situations in flux. Bo Levi Mitchell has not been healthy the past couple, few years. He hasn't been there. He's the number one quarterback. They're paying a lot of money. Um, and if he can't be on the field, he was the highest winning percentage quarterback when he was with Calgary, Stan Peters. And since then, the last couple of years in Calgary and since he joined Hamilton, it hasn't been so good. He just doesn't know how to take the check down. He's been throwing the ball deep into coverage when he shouldn't have. If he, he's, it's been reported that he's in a walking boot right now after being injured last year. If he's not there, he's not playing well and doing what they need to do, we're going to have Hamilton at number nine. At number eight will be the Toronto Argonauts. This is a team that went 16-2 and two last year. Why are they number eight? Their quarterback just got a conduct detrimental. He was the MOP, the most valuable player of the league, basically. Offensive player of the year. He has conduct detrimental to the, to the league, to the team, for a whole situation that happened with a trainer, things of that nature. We're not going to dive into that. But he's not there. You have to go. With, yeah. Yeah. Chad Kelly. Who, this is where you dive into it. Wait, who? Chad Kelly, who used to play for Mississippi. Oh, he has a history of crazy shit. He has shit. a history. So, From college and on. So, so yeah, him, that's not and, shocking. So him and the trainer, supposedly, he even make it inappropriate. Remarks to her and a little bit of getting oh, it's at a her. female. It's a female trainer. Okay. Yes. So she reports okay. it. Toronto say, you know, we have no reports of that. That's on our side. They fired her, so they end up firing her. So she sues. Yep. She sues, and the CFL does an investigation. They find out that hey, Chad Kelly has been doing some inappropriate things. We're going to suspend him for the first nine games of eighteen games. At the MOP. After they won 16 and two games last year, they lost their defensive coordinator, and they also lost a lot of players on defense. They lost their kick returner, who broke the record for kick returns in the season. They lost their running back, who was a top running back in the league, who goes to fast, to fast, fast. So their backup quarterback, who played well a couple of games last year, he's only 25. He has to step up. <laughs> So that was a big thing for them. So now we're going to go with number seven, Ottawa Red Blacks. They have Drew Brown. Drew Brown takes over as their quarterback. He's taking over for Mazzoli. Hold on, Rudy. Give me one second.
Let's go back into the CFL corner with Nick. You left off at what, number eight? Number seven. Number seven. The, number seven. Uh, uh, we had number seven, the Ottawa Red Blacks. Um, this should be a good one. With the acquisition of Drew Brown, who came over from Winnipeg, with a nine to one touchdown to interception ratio, he played a short time up here for the Winnipeg. He came in to spare um, Zach Caleros, the former MOP for the past two years before um, with just the Toronto quarterback, Chad Kelly, just won it. He stepped in and he had an 11-yard average. Um, he went over to Ottawa in the trade. Um, they also added Dominique touchdown runs over there. Um, can they connection get there fast enough? Can it be a T-Mobile connection, AT&T connection? Do they hit the ground running? Um, their defense was terrible in the secondary last year. They gave up big plays after big plays. Can they stop big plays? And can that change their season this year to – go forward and farther than they went before. They lost Devontae Williams um, to injury to Achilles as a running back dynamic player to start the season. That's going to be devastating. How can they overcome that? They're at number seven. At number six, we're going to go with the Edmonton Eskimos. I mean, I'm sorry. I apologize. The Edmonton Elks, my former team. Um, they bring back McLeod Bethel. They're not the Eskimos, they're not the Eskimos no, anymore? They changed the name. They changed the name a couple of years ago. Yep. Oh, because God. of the yeah, whole situation went on. Um, McLeod Bethel's MBT, McLeod Bethel Thompson. Last time we seen him in the CFL, he was with Toronto. Um, threw for 23 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. They brought him back to the team after sitting out from Canada from a year. He went to the USFL. But what happened with Edmonton last year, they got on the roll with their backup quarterback after they started off 0-9 and they were putrid. Nobody cared about them. They were the laughing stocks of the league. Trey Ford comes in, he looks like Michael Vick on freaking steroids. Nobody could tackle this guy. He could throw the ball. He can't make quick reads. He can't make reads and things of that nature. But Lord have mercy, their RPO game went insane. Their running back, Kevin Brown, benefited so much from it. He ran for 1,100 yards. Um, and they decided to go get MBT um, and bring – and be their quarterback because they want more of a quarterback who will throw the ball down the field because they have receivers who make it $300,000 in Eugene Lewis, and they have Kyron Moore, they added Curly Gittin, and they have Dylan Mitchell. So they have a great group of receivers. For, for, for perspective, 300000 in, in in Canadian football that's is a very high paid that's player. That's the highest paid receiver in the league. So when you have the highest paid receiver in the league, you want to throw the ball to him as much as possible so you go get a quarterback who's going to be a gunslinger. Now, MBT, he will throw the ball. He might throw the ball to the other team a lot, but he will throw the ball a lot. So that's why I have them at six. Their defense isn't so good. Chris Jones is known for defense, but he hasn't got them playing good defense. They run basically elementary defense in the back end of their defense. And they're missing their top sacks player, um, the sack person from last year in A.C. Leonard. At number five. We have the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Trevor Harris is getting a little older. He had a knee injury last year. They started off 3-1 and one last year. They looked like a team that could contend. But when he got hurt, all went to hell. They started off with 3-1, and one, but were they 3-1 and one because they played the Edmonton Elks, who were freaking terrible to start the season, and they got two of their three wins against them, or were they just a good team? We don't know. They ended up the season at 6-12, and 12, missed the playoffs, but they're coming back with a new coach, Corey Mace from Toronto, who led the league in sacks last year. Um, they forced a lot of turnovers. He has a great blitz and sink scheme that goes on. We're looking for Sass to be one of the top teams this year, coming back this year, being right around the middle ground. At number four, people are going to say, hey, Nick, you're going with Calgary because you played for them last year. No, I'm going with Calgary because they come back with Malik Henry as a receiver. They come back with Reggie Bagleton. They come back with um, Clark Barnes. They come back with Tyson Philpott, a great receiver group. They got DJ Mills at running back, and they have the top leading DB with interceptions last year in Demary Houston. Is that enough for a change? It all depends on the quarterback. Can Jake Myers be more consistent this year at quarterback? Can he be more than 19 to 15 in interception, touchdown interception ratio? Can they run the ball a lot more this year? Last year, Calgary problem was not running the ball enough. 
They put the ball into the quarterback hands, and then they have the receivers to go along with it because two of their top receivers were out. So that's why Calgary's at four because I'm looking for them to have a bigger, better year with Jake Myers stepping up and throwing the ball off a little bit more. If he doesn't, Matthew Schultz, the backup quarterback, is well enough to step up and be that guy. At number three, we have the defender champion, the Montreal Alouettes. They got hot the second half of the season. They brought in, they brought in the backup, not the backup, but the the, the um, second place winner in the defensive player of the year award the year before, who got released at the start of camp. He came in and made a big change for their defense. Started, he had nine sacks in 13 games, um, forced fumbles, two interceptions, and they also brought in Darnell Sankey. But this year, he, the, um, there's a little bit of changes. The DN, who made all the big plays for them, will not be there this year. He retired. They say because of the gambling thing and whatnot, but he retired before that even came out, so they lose him. And Cody Fajardo, he proved to be a big-time quarterback in big games. He stepped up. Um, they played Winnipeg in the championship, and he made two big throws, a third and five. He made a throw down the left side of the field to his guy for a bomb, and then he throws on a zero coverage against Winnipeg, a post route to, to um, the other field pot twin, and they win the game. Can Cody Fajardo step up the next year and be that quarterback again to lead their, guy, their team? They lose their running back. William stand back. He goes to BC. He's a bruiser. Who's going to step up? Is it Antwi? Is it Fletcher? Who knows? We'll see this year. But their defense in the last eight games of the season gave up 15 points per game. Outstanding. They made, they made Toronto turn the ball over seven times in the game to go to the championship, and that's what led them there. At number two, we got the BC Lions, arguably the top receiver and crew going on for another year. They got Hollins, they got Hatcher, they got Katoy, and they got six foot six McKinnis. They have a great group of receivers. They're one downfall. They can't beat Winnipeg in Winnipeg when it counts. The past two years, they lost in Winnipeg in the West Finals. Can their quarterback lead them this year? We'll see. Vernon Adams threw for, threw for close to 5,000 yards last year, 31 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. His problem is interceptions. He had one game where he threw six interceptions in the game. Can he step up this year with the running game that they needed? They added. They added William Stanback from Montreal, a champion, a bruiser. He's only 29 years old, averaged 5.5 yards a carry, coming back from the injury from the year before. He was a top five player in the CFL. Does he change their game? Is did they add a running back who can carry them when it's snowing, when the weather is bad? Does he change it for them? They need a running back. They need somebody who can run the ball. At the top spot, man, we go to Winnipeg, man. The past four years, this team has won 75% of their games. 75% of their games. Two championships. Went to four. They lost two championships by a total of five points. Last play of the game of each championship that they're – you know, they gave up a, they missed the, they got a field goal block and they gave up a touchdown up four. Why did they lose the, the last championship, Nick? The last championship? Yeah. Why did they lose the last championship? They lost the last two. I'm not the last gonna... two? They lost the last two? Yeah, I was hurt. The, I was hurt the year, the, the third one. year. The third one. Well, the first championship that they lost, because I know you won two in a row. What was the, why did they lose the third one? It was, we had a couple injuries on the team, and we made a couple mistakes in the championship game that we normally don't make. It, it, it's okay. You're retired. You can say it's because I, I got injured and I couldn't play. I got injured and I couldn't fucking play. I'm going to say it. Damn it. I was a big part of that defense. I don't get the respect that I deserve in, that, in the league, and I'm going to say it right now. Um, I was a big part of that defense, especially on the field side. I'm the captain. I'm uncle. I, I, I make the shit roll. I call the plays. I call it out before yeah. it happens. I get my, my team. I get my field corner in line. I get my, my Sam in line. I talk to my safety, and it's a great connection. I talk to my defensive end. It's just a connection that we have. Um, I'm the voice out there. Um, I don't like to brag about it because, you know, who does? 
But I was instrumental, instrumental to their team. And when I blew my Achilles that year, after having three interceptions in the first four games, having an all-star season, it was a big blow for us, just from a leadership veteran standpoint. I'm not going to say my game, even though my game was pretty good, but more of my vocal, my leadership. We missed out on that, and we ended up losing that year. We, maybe I play and we still lose, but shit, the past three years that I played in Winnipeg, we only lost four games in the game. Three games in, the, in 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 thirty five games that I played in, so hmm, maybe me, maybe not. But I was a big part of what went on there. And the next year they come back and they lose again. It, it's can... okay, you can toot your own horn. I mean, you do think the two thousand six Vikings are the best uh, Northern State champions? So, so I mean, so like I said, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers <laughs> are the team to be still. The past four years, seventy five percent of the games they won, and I'm gonna say about three of those games, their starting quarterback didn't play. So when he plays, they probably win about 85% of their games when he does play. Zach Caleros, the two-time MOP, while he'd been over, in there, over there in Winnipeg, um, he won the two years before the previous year where Chad Kelly just won. Um, Winnipeg is still at the top of the ranking. you you got to beat the champs to be the champs. Even though y'all beat them in the championship the past two years, they're still the top of the, the top of the league, the top of the food barrel, the top of the food chain. They are there. They are the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They're still at the top. So, All right, so I don't know much about CFL football other than Nick played, and I watched him play a lot of times, as much as I could when they'd show it um, down here, because they didn't show it only on TSN, and they don't always have TSN down here. I have to find a way to get that channel. Yeah, ESPN, too, a couple times. ESPN yeah. would show it once in a while. They would show the championship game and what have you, no, some of the playoff it's games. games. It's, it's games during there the was a few. ESPN too. There was a few. There was but a few. I don't but, tell um, y'all when I'm not playing. So. But I, I don't know. I, I like That's why I didn't speak, because I really don't know shit about the CFL other than he played. And I did think that 300000 was a high salary there. That's why I asked that question. Um, and I do know that Nick was, did, didn't play in that, last, that championship game, and, and that's why they lost. So, hey, toot your own horns. Okay. Toot, um, <clears throat> toot. So thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell. So you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.